to the Weather or Not podcast sponsored by TD Bank. I'm WABC Chief Meteorologist Lee Goldberg, and we have a lot on our weather plate today. In this episode, we're going to talk about one, two, even three storms that we can see in the extended as we go into the middle of January. It's a very active pattern. Obviously, we've had a shift that we talked about on weather or not into January. Now the question is, will that shift in pattern turn in to a snowfall that will break a long time record standing in New York City right now, which is nearly 700 days without getting an inch in a single day. We had an inch or more in two days back in February, but we can't seem to must muster up a measly inch uh, during a day. It's actually going to be a close call with this particular storm that we're getting ready for over the weekend. It is by no means a slam dunk, and in a lot of New York City, a plowable snow is actually looking more and more unlikely. But let's dive right into it and get you through the next two or even three storms that we have to deal with through the middle of the month. All right, so first of all, it's all about our weekend storm right now. You know, we've had so much snow anticipation about this. Uh, it's a vibe I actually haven't experienced in quite a while because you have to go back to late January of 2021 to see a storm that really got significant around New York City and got six inches or more. So when we even started to talk about the potential for accumulating snow in New York City, uh, it was unbelievable um, all the outcry and all of the questions that started flowing in. And I, I just want to say that in terms of our approach it hasn't changed over the years uh, we're not going to rush we're going to be right in terms of our weather team and uh, I think this has been a very complex situation in this storm in that a, a lot of early estimates started coming up that New York City was going to get uh, buried with snowfall and we really held off on that idea uh, because of the questionable nature with this storm so let's go ahead and explain what I'm talking about all right first things first we have had this set up for an incredible snow drought. Remember, 2023, warmest year on record. Uh, the least snowiest season with under two and a half inches of snow. This past December, the second warmest. Again, nearing that 700-day record without an inch in a single day. The last storm I just talked about, the big one back in 2021. And so far for the season, we've had a trace of snow. So that just means there's snow in the air, not enough to measure. We had that happen once in November. We had it again happen in December. I think we'll get a little bit more than that. But will this be the scene? You know, we have snow cover and shoveling and plows in the suburbs. That's a possibility. Our confidence has been growing as we're getting closer to the storm as per usual. And the timing is going to be later in the day on Saturday. But I want to make sure you know that if you are out and about after 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon hours, some snow and rain is going to start to come in. So that timing has sped up a little bit, which is also a sign somewhat of the weakness of this system. The fact that it's moving so fast, it doesn't have a lot of time to ramp up and be a, a huge, strong storm across our area. Now, I do expect several inches of heavy wet snow across the interior and when I say the interior it's it's really on the other side of I-95 you don't have to go very fine uh, very far inland I remember a professor once saying to me uh, sometimes to get um, the heaviest snow you have to be on the rain snow line and you can sort of smell the heaviest snow just off to the north and west so that's what may happen with this storm is, is you may go from fighting with a rain and mix and snow over New York City and you go to the other side of that rain snow line and it's a winter wonderland and it's, it's not that far away across parts of northern New Jersey and the lower Hudson Valley and interior Connecticut. Again, it will be a battle on I-95. It'll be all about some of the intensity of the snow. Along with this will be some gusty winds. I'm not anticipating damaging winds. Uh, there could be some gusts, maybe 35, 40 along the coast. And then you'll have some minor coastal flooding with this, but I don't think it's anything too major. I want to talk about the factors that are fighting against a big snowfall in New York City. Number one, as I talked about, the storm is progressive. It's moving right along. If the storm was slowing down, strengthening closer to us, then we'd have a better chance of seeing a major snowfall. There's actually a small window for the significant accumulation. Uh, I would say we're talking about early evening Saturday to maybe 3, 4 in the morning on Sunday is when the heart of the accumulation happens and then there can be some additional light accumulation as the storm departs and we go over to snow and you know could it be a 
uh, a trace to an inch or two from that band that departs the storm. Yes. So I don't want you to call it quits in terms of the snow on Sunday. There still could be some slippery spots when you're traveling and some low visibilities. Uh, the wind is off this ocean too long. Uh, it's more easterly. So when you're talking about 40 to 45 degree ocean water, you're just not going to be able to produce the snowfall with that. Uh, along and, and southeast of the I-95. So city, Long Island, coastal Connecticut, coastal New Jersey, it is just too much working against you. Also, you know, we're getting some very chilly air that's coming in Thursday night into Friday. Uh, I mean, wind chills on Friday morning are in the teens. Uh, the problem is the storm isn't coming till Saturday afternoon and the cold air is slightly stale when it's in place. You want a fresh cold air mass in place. Now, it will be cold enough in our northern suburbs. I just don't think uh, that that cold air will be strong enough uh, that it holds in in New York City and the coastline to produce all snowfall. The leftover snowfall Sunday looks fairly light as it departs, but I also don't want to discard and throw away that there might be a heavier band that just does a sweep across parts of the area and, and drops another quick inch. And all of a sudden, you know, we've gone through this whole storm. We haven't verified an inch and you get a quick coating to an inch in New York City, mainly on colder surfaces. So that's kind of the, the factors fighting against it. The factors that would fight for it, and, and there aren't as many pros, but it's if the storm intensifies a little faster, uh, the track is actually okay. I mean, like a couple of weeks from now, it's probably a perfect track because climatologically we're getting colder deeper into January. I love the track. It's just that there's not enough uh, cold air available in the oceans too warm. Uh, if there is some heavy banding that forms just north and west of New York City, which I, I do think will happen at times, if that heavier precipitation can get close to the city, can get close to the coast, what happens is the atmosphere we call it dynamically cools. The precipitation is so heavy, um, you cool the atmosphere, so you're able to counteract all that warming that's happening from the ocean. So all of a sudden, you can go back to heavy snow for a little bit, and then the precipitation gets lighter, and you go back to rain. Not much icing in the storm, by the way, maybe a touch of sleet. So that's the idea that, okay, that's why I would still allow for that inch or two in New York City, and why having haven't, when you see the snowfall map, I haven't totally taken New York City and say a trace to an inch for the entire five boroughs. I just don't want to write that off just yet. Um, this look at some of the steering winds really is kind of supports what I was talking about with this progressive storm. Remember, we talk about dips and, and bumps in the jet stream, troughs and ridges. It's such a flat wave. In other words, it's just it, there's no big digging of this trough. It's a fast moving wave. So it just doesn't have time to strengthen it. It's just not particularly strong. So when I come down to it, it's like it's it's too weak. It's too warm. It's too fast. There's just a lot in my head when I looked at the structure of the storm from the beginning that didn't scream big toll even when some modeling was pushing out the totals. Just another thing I want to hit with that. Sure, I mean, the computer guidance is a huge part of our forecasting. But pattern recognition, understanding how the storm is evolving, it is not all about the models. And even though we and, and you hear that we're waiting for this run or that one and we're refreshing, sure, that's a part of it in terms of trend. But meteorology is not about the models. It, it, it is about looking at the patterns. It's about using the history of how storms are evolving, knowing what the current situation is, whether it be our warm oceans or our orographic lifting off to the north and west because of the terrain. It's factoring in all of those things. So we can't just be tethered to what the models are showing. We have to take the themes that the models are telling us and then translate to the forecast. All right, so by Monday, uh, we're saying goodbye to this storm, obviously. We're getting some brief chill. That's actually another calm before storm that we'll talk about midweek next week. But let's take you through uh, the future cast showing how the storm is coming in. Now, because we're still, let's say, 48 hours away upon recording this, um, it's not in the wheelhouse of this particular future cast, but I think, again, it's telling us some really important themes. For instance, you can be out and about through early afternoon on Saturday, not worry about anything. It's going to be dry. Uh, you might feel the breezes picking up. Once we get into the mid-afternoon, and this is a little different than the past couple of days, not going to wait until sunset, we'll have some rain and snow moving in. Uh, temperatures will be above freezing. Roadways will be just wet at first. Visibilities can go down. But then when sunset comes in, We've already started to get into some pretty good precipitation. And look at the signature with this. Maybe it comes in as a snow or a little rain mix in New York City, rain to the south. But now you've got 
some colder over northern New Jersey, some of the heavy snow there, the rain snow line kind of wrapping around I-95. This is depicting as New York City as rain at 7 o'clock in the evening and just north and west of I-287, steady snowfall. And then later in the evening, you can see how close that rain snow line is to New York City. I mean, we're in the brunt of the storm here, 10, 11 o'clock at night. You've got heavy snow north of I-80 in New Jersey. You've got heavy rain and mixed to the south. But look what's going on over the Hudson Valley, Connecticut, all those darker shades. That's all good snow. And even if, and this is what, what the signature I was talking about, even if we see some of that heavy precipitation kind of nose into New York City, you could go right back to some snow. This is depicting it over parts of New York City, uh, Long Island, not the South Shore, but the North Shore. So that's kind of the little sort of devil in the details that we'll have to watch as this storm comes through. As the precipitation gets heavier, we get the snow back. Now, it'll be tough to stick to the streets in New York City that way if you're going back and forth, and temperatures are probably at worst at freezing. Uh, so maybe it gets a little slushy in the city at times, but this whole evolution really argues against a plowable storm in New York City, yet just to the north and west, it's more significant. Road conditions are much worse. Travel conditions are much dangerous, uh, much more dangerous. All right, so now we go into the wee hours of the morning on Sunday, and we're seeing the heaviest precipitation now north and east of New York City. Still good snows over the Hudson Valley, Connecticut, and parts of western Long Island. And then at daybreak, really the heaviest is gone. But what I want to point out is the band of snow that this is depicting over parts of the Hudson Valley, Catskills, Poconos, Northwest New Jersey. And that's the kind of parting shot that this storm may have. And it looks a little bit more organized than it did in the last couple of days. And if that makes a clean sweep through, all of a sudden you tack on an additional coating to an inch or two. Not a huge deal, but I don't want you to write off the snow after daybreak. It, it could impact your travel into the midday or early afternoon hours on, on Sunday. And I can actually see how it's still kind of flaking light snow showers even into Sunday evening. So looking at the breakdown, you've got mostly rain, coastal New Jersey. You've got a battle zone over central New Jersey, New York City, Long Island, coastal Connecticut, even the uh, lower Westchester, uh, southern Bergen, where there's rain, snow, a little bit of sleet, not a major icing. Don't have to worry about that. And then it ends as snow. So a lot of these places could get their accumulation as the storm is beginning to move away. All right. So here is our snowfall map. Um, you know, as of this recording, working through Thursday afternoon and Thursday evening. And you can see how the theme is much less at the coast, much higher totals inland, but also a very, um, you know, small room for error here as you go just north and west. So that's why I kept the one inch line right over Midtown, right over the Bronx, allowing for the fact that maybe you could get an inch or two uh, as those heavy bands try to sweep back into New York City, whereas that's a little less likely over parts of Southern Queens, Brooklyn, uh, maybe uh, the eastern half of Staten Island, but we have to watch that closely. Uh, obviously, a trace to an inch over coastal New Jersey, very little close to the trace, but maybe you know, over parts of the North Shore of Long Island, maybe there is a band at the end that drops an inch or two. Um, then nearby north and west, it just ramps up in a, in a hurry. You go into northwest Bergen County, we're in a three to six inch snow. Parts of Ber uh, Morris County, northwest of I-287, a three to six inch snow. And, and could some places be closer to the six in this band if it's heavy enough? Absolutely. I mean, I could see how I could dr have to drag that six inch band even closer. And that three to six inch band is, is very, very narrow and skinny. But again, there's the idea. Is farther north and west, you're getting the bigger totals, you're plowing, you're shoveling as we go into Sunday morning. Again, a larger look at the system. Here it comes in, a late mix on Saturday, the brunt at night, and this is actually gearing toward the first part of the night. I really think the heaviest precipitation could move out of our area between 3 and 5 in the morning with lingering snows and rains after that into the day on Sunday. We get to Monday. It's the calm before the next soaker. So that's storm number two we're going to talk about, which actually is a more powerful, impactful storm. It could actually be a blizzard across parts of the middle of the country into the upper Midwest, we're on the warm side with ripping winds out of the south and southeast, along with maybe a couple of inches of rain. So think about that along the Passaic River Basin. Maybe some of the higher snow totals over northern New Jersey. 
uh, and then put a couple of inches of rain on top of that with our rivers already running high. There's a major flood concern as we go into that later Tuesday in the very early morning Wednesday time period. Also, the winds could really howl. That could be a coastal flooding situation and maybe a, a high wind criteria where we could have some damaging winds in that. We're still, of course, several days away, but it looks like a very powerful storm that will bring big time snows well to our west. We're going to be on the warmer side of it, but I think it's another water issue, one in the, in the long line of these flooding storms that, that we've had to deal with. So we'll be talking about that. All right, we are going to pick up with that long-range forecast. Uh, look at the weather pattern into the middle of January. Do we have any more snow chances on the books? I'll talk about that when we come back. Okay, returning to the middle of a month, are we in store for more snow? That's not a lock. Are we in store for more storms? Absolutely. So let me take you through the week. As we get that storm on Tuesday, which looks super impressive, I mean, the jet stream alone is just uh, so much more amplified. This is going to be a powerful storm, big time winds and very heavy rainfall. That will move out on the day on Wednesday. We'll get a cold shot, which also looks kind of transient. So we're still not allowing the cold air to get locked in. There's definitely some Arctic air that's sitting over central Canada, but right now pieces of it are coming eastward through the middle of the month and then kind of ejecting out. There looks like there's another storm that will be slated for the following weekend around let's say the 13th on Saturday I know another weekend storm to deal with this one also looks like it's going to be we'll be on the warmer side of that storm so I, I don't anticipate a snow chance there through probably about the 15th of the month and if you just look overall at, at the outlook over the next 10 days after the cold shot leading into this weekend storm our temperatures are normal to above normal and you can see that spike on Wednesday um, when modeling is talking about temperatures that are running 10 12 degrees above of normal a week out, you know that it could be even warmer than that. Could we get 60s into our area during the day on Wednesday? That's a possibility. And then back to seasonable temperatures behind that. Even the Climate Prediction Center, you look at January 11th, the 17th, and the below normal air is out west, and we have above normal signals over the northeast. That doesn't mean we can't get snow, but the cold air pushes are going to have to be timed perfectly with any storms that are coming across the south in what we call the subtropical jet stream. And that's just, the, the odds are not with us with that, even though our precipitation chances are definitely above normal at that point. All right, let's just sum up everything we've been talking about here uh, as we go through the next 72 hours. I want you to make sure you layer up. Uh, do not underestimate the cold shot that's coming in with wind chills uh, that we have really felt rarely this season. On Friday morning, we'll be in the single digits and teens. Over the weekend, we've got rain and snow coming in Saturday mid to late afternoon. The brunt of the storm will be Saturday night. Early Sunday, we'll still be dealing with some snow showers and a couple of bands that'll roll through along the coast. It's more of a mix. And then, of course, that extended forecast Another AccuWeather alert for high winds and heavy rain, and the timing on that is going to be the second half of Tuesday. Probably the brunt will be Tuesday night into early Wednesday. Allow for a little wiggle room on that timing, but I think uh, if you're talking about extended travel plans, you want to be uh, off the roads as we go through late Tuesday and especially into Tuesday night. All right, so we will continue to tweak the forecast, uh, look at some of the details as they reveal themselves. You know, could we get more banding into New York City? Will we have to take totals up at all? I don't anticipate that, but I will watch it for you. We'll continue to post on all uh, of our platforms. For those of you that are listening on the podcast, uh, all of the maps um, I'll be posting on all of our pl platforms and they're always available on ABC7NY. Listen, this is one of the main reasons uh, why we launched Whether or Not, was to talk about these storms and be uh, a voice of reality when it comes to these storms. No hype involved, just want to tell you the truth and where we're at with a particular storm, be honest about the uncertainty. Uh, but as we get closer, I think we've really kind of locked in on our forecast right here with that battle zone being over I-95. That's where we may need some wiggle room with some of the heavy bands of snow. But get ready north and west for a good snowfall and to get the uh, the shovels or snowblowers out, and we'll be with you every single step of the way. Thanks once again for watching whether or not we'll see you next time. Rain or shine or snow. Mm -hmm.